All right, quick random tutorial about making barbed wire and Christmas lights and other random stuff with MASH. Um, all right, so first thing you want to do is create some kind of curve. Uh, and I'm just going to go through and really quickly sort of, you know, make it maybe a slightly more interesting shape just for grins. Great, cool, or something. Um, and I am going to go through and then make basically a little profile that I can extrude along this curve. So I'm actually going to do barbed wire because I just think it's kind of funny. Um, so I'm just going to mesh combine these guys, maybe scale them down like a tiny bit. And then I'm going to use C to get this sort of close to the curve if I can, and then snap it onto the curve, which for some reason works better for me sometimes than others. <laughs> Um, all right, so throw this at the end of, or what, blah, at the beginning of your curve and get it kind of close as you can. Go in and just select all of the faces in the object, then the curve, and do extrude uh, like you would normally do if you're doing poly modeling. Um, the next thing you want to do is, like this looks pretty terrible, um, you want to go in and add more divisions to this. Um, in this case, I'm probably going to have to manually enter a number because 25 is not going to be enough. 200. Great, great. Uh, that's probably way too many. Um, okay, actually, I can probably get away with like 75. Great. Um, so now we have all these divisions in here. Um, if you want to, you can also come in and add some twist. Um, and in this, this is one where you usually have to go in and enter some insanely large number. Um, I've done something crazy like 50,000 for a really long route before, but you can see it's adding a little bit of twist to the mesh. And let me just do like 6,000, make it really twisty. Um, so the one thing you'll notice is a few things. Um, one, my normals are reversed on this object, so I'm just going to do mesh display reverse. And two, the twist is really uneven, so you have not a lot of twist here, lots of twist, and then kind of not a lot at the end there. And that's just due to the... Uh, what am I going for? Um, that is due to the control vertex density in your curve. So you have like lots of density here, not a lot of density here. So what you want to do if you if you need an even twist to your surface, if you don't need even twist, it kind of doesn't matter. If you do, just go into curves and rebuild. These are the settings I use. Um, so I'm just going to go through and do a uniform rebuild, which is basically going to leave a bunch of sort of equidistant uh, control vertices. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And if we look at our curve now the control vertices should be much more evenly spaced, which means uh, that our twist will be updated and it is much smoother now. Um, so same thing if you're doing like an extrude with the surface, you can still modify the extrude afterwards as long as you do not delete history on your object. Uh, just know that if you do that again, if you stretch this really far, it's going to mess with your twist, but you can also rebuild the curve again if you need to. Um, so this is going to be sort of the, the fun, I guess, cute part of, well, not cute part, what am I saying? The rope part of our barbed wire. Um, so stuff like this also works really nicely for Christmas lights or other random things, um, you know, necklaces. Um, so the next thing we want to do is make some kind of, what we're going for, helix. Um, I'm going to make the actual little barbs for the barbed wire, question mark. Um, every time I say that, I feel like a crazy person. Um, I'm also really bad at setting this up. Alright, so I'm just going to say like, cool, here's our barbs. Um, I am going to modify these settings because we're going to be basically duplicating this a bunch and having 50 loops on this is a wee bit excessive. Um, so I'm just going to go through and then grab the ends of this and be like, extrude, barbs, and then extrude again. And I'm just going to grab each of these and do merge to center so we don't need to deal with these n-gons here because n-gons are evil. Um, all right, so we have barbs and you can make those more or less pointed as you want them. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and zero this out. So what we're going to do is use mash to basically take this thing and throw it along my curve. Uh, so we want to go into mash, make a new mash network, and we're going to do that with this little uh, barbie thing. Barbie, ugh, gross. Uh, select it, <laughs> and you can see it's basically done the default thing where it populates uh, 10 units along your curve. Or, well, sorry, it just makes a straight line of 10 units. So I'll open my little mash editor uh, outliner thing for mash, 
And I want to go in and go into my distribute node. Um, I'll just take, I'll leave number of points as 10. I'm going to take the distance down to zero. And I'm going to go in and add a, wait, what am I doing? Sorry. Um, distribution type. Yes, OK, I am going crazy. Uh, sorry. Go into your mash again, and then add a curve. Just click it and do add curve node. And then once you go in there, it's going to ask you for your input curve. And what you're going to do is grab that little curve one that you made that you used to extrude the barb barbed wire along and throw that in. You can see that now we have uh, those 10 objects being extruded along the curve. Um, so there's a few different ways to sort of control what you're doing here. Um, step is going to be basically how many of these do you want populated along the curve. In this case, um, it was set to a really low value, so it's kind of only using the first part of the curve. And then as you slide that, that's really satisfying. As you slide this higher, it's going to sort of go the rest of the length of your curve. Um, so this is how I usually populate stuff along the curve. The, but you'll notice like these look pretty wrong, um, right? Like this, this wire is supposed to be wrapped around the curve and not clipping casually through it. So there's a few different ways that you can fix this. Uh, I think honestly the easiest way is to just unhide that original, uh, original object and just rotate this until it is the direction that you want. So in this case, rotating it about 90 degrees on apparently the Z axis uh, got me where I wanted. And you'll notice like it, it does actually do a pretty good job of just like sitting right on that curve. Um, but we can also go through and sort of scale these down. And if there's like a uniform uh, way that it, they're all sort of not working, uh, what you can do is grab the faces in the object. It's a little janky. But like grab the faces in the object and shift them into place and it's going to modify all of the the stuff in your mesh network um, so that's usually how i go through and just sort of like create the barbed wire uh, there's a few more things that you can do to make it a little bit nicer looking um, and that so we're going to go back into our mesh node you can also smooth this if you're so inclined which is one of the reasons like since we populated this a bazillion times having not having 50 loops is always a good thing um, so like I said, go into your mesh network and we are going to add a random node. Um, cause right, that's not super on the curve. Um, it's actually kind of weird that that's so far off. That's probably actually, what did I do? That's because I moved faces on my helix. Probably. What did I do there? That's very much not accurate, which is weird. Um, Usually if I find something like that, where it's just like, yeah, something just got a little janky there. I'm not entirely sure what. Um, weird. Um, I'm just going to kind of ignore that for now. It's probably some kind of issue with the, the curve itself. Um, although it does seem to be lining up, so I'm not really sure why it's doing that. Usually if that happens, I just sort of re redo my, my mash network. Um, Anywho, so go into this random node. Oh, no, duh, that's what it is. It's the stupid random node. I'm going to turn this off, and I forget that it does this every single bloody time. All right, go into your random node, and you'll notice that we have uh, randomization options for your position, rotation, and scale. And in this case, position is all set to 1. So it's randomly translating my stuff uh, away from the curve, and I don't want it to. <laughs> Doy. All right, so like I said, you can do you can set up sort of random translations. And in this case, what we want is rotation. Um, and actually, conveniently, if I just do my X rotation, um, that's going to pretty much do what I want. And you'll see it's just uh, going through and adding a little bit of randomization so that all my little barbs are not pointed the same direction. And for barbed wire, you only need to do that on one axis, right? Because it doesn't really make sense. Like, you don't want to rotate it like this. It's going to start clipping again. Um, so that's pretty much barbed wire, honestly, in mesh. Um, if you wanted to, you could add scale, question mark. Um, I don't really know why you'd want to do this in this point uh, for barbed wire, but like you could if you wanted to. Um, and then you can also change your random seed if you don't like how the barbed wire is positioning. Um, basically say, hey, re-randomize this. Um, and that's, that's pretty much barbed wire. So like I said, um, you can do this with Christmas lights. Uh, you can do this with barbed wire. You can do this with many, many things. Um, it's just sort of 
the barbed wire is like the weird fun one and it takes like 10 seconds right like populating this manually would be the worst thing ever and with mash you get these perfectly like equidistantly spaced um little things with random rotation and it took me five minutes to set this up so mash is good 